What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? In this video, I'm going to basically take you a little bit with me into um, the context switching from Go to Odin. For the people that don't know, I am building a Market Monkey, which is a prop trading terminal for uh, order flow, liquidity analysis, uh, quant trading, and all that stuff. And we first wrote this in Golang, and we decided to basically migrate to Odin for performance reasons you can basically check the previous video i made about this right and so this video is basically going to be hey how does it feel to write odin is it any good and why do i why do we pick odin or why do i picked odin and what's the, the difference the caveats between go and odin itself right so but before we continue if you are not yet subscribed to my channel and you want to make my grandma proud because i promise to be over 100k subscribers this year so if you don't make grandma proud, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, leave some questions in the comments, jump into the Discord community. All right, so uh, as you can see, Market Monkey is running here. Uh, we have some heat maps going on, multiple panels. We can actually do, for example, he's XRP, boom, and then we can, uh, we can do a lot of stuff, right? Um, you know what I mean? It's, it's M GUI. It's in GUI with Mplot, although the heat maps are basically custom implemented because uh, due to scaling with the price and yada, 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 I'm not going to give you the details. Uh, you can join the Discord and ask me there, right? So um, if you're going to see the previous version that was written in Go with a bitten engine, the Ibit engine, um, and a bitten UI, or yeah, a bitten UI, it was a little bit rough, right? They didn't have these uh, panel implementations, and I can actually do a lot of a lot of cool stuff. I can just keep adding things, reordering panels and all that stuff, dock them left and right. It doesn't really matter. Everything is getting handled by MGUI, right? And that was basically one of the main reasons to swap to some other language that could basically have the bindings uh, and render everything uh, more decently than Golang does, right? So that's that. So amazing stuff, right? Um, nice. Cool. So basically, how does it feel to write Odin? Let me kill this. And let me also basically, with this Twitter here, let me do that. Zoom in for the blind homies here a little bit. So if you see, for example, let me let me pick some, some here, for example, destruct, right? If you see how Odin writes, it's basically the same thing, kind of the same way, the same mindset of Golang, right? Everything is a simple, everything is a struct, it's data only, and you operate uh, on the data with functions, and in Odin it's called procedures, right? Uh, for example, here chart, uh, chart widget init is going to be a proc, which basically means a procedure, right? Uh, in Golang it's func, here it's proc. Um, it's basically the same way, uh, because people say, yeah, but in, in Odin you need to basically pass, um, for example, your, your, main sub, your main subject, uh, the chart in this case, as the first argument. But in Golang, it's the exact same, right? Because if you check uh, this chart widget and we go, for example, the previous uh, Golang implementation here, let uh, me zoom in even for the more blind homies, uh, chart widget init, you can see here, man, this is a long fucking function, I'm gonna lie. Come on, man, yes, here, for example, chart, chart widget receive. It's the same thing, right? But the only thing in Golang is it gives you the fake assumption that you're working with methods, uh, but it's just a plain function with some syntactic sugar on top of it, right? So func chart widget, and then here you have um, that they call the function received with your argument. So it's basically the same thing. It's just being written a little bit different, giving people the false assumption that you're working with classes or something. That's not true. Uh, so they're basically the same thing uh, counts for Odin. You just have structures and you operate with procedures or functions on your data, and that's it. Nothing more, nothing less. Uh, the syntax, basically the same thing, right? Um, I'm gonna look for the, uh, for example, here from this column equal, uh, where you're basically gonna infer the type. It, it's, it almost writes exactly the same as Golang, right? Um, there is basically no differences. However, however, and that's actually one of the main reasons I actually picked that language, because People say, why don't you use Rust or Zig? And you know, the never ending battle of the languages. And hey, listen, Rust, Zig, they are not bad languages. It's just, I don't like a lot of sugar. You know what I mean? I already mentioned that. For me, if I wanna code something and I have something in my mind, an idea that I wanna write on my screen, I just do not wanna think about the language. I wanna think about my problem, how I'm gonna solve it. What do I need to do? And maybe I'm too old. Maybe I'm a boomer, I could be, uh, and Odin and Golang just 
does that. It's so simple that um, I can just forget the language and, and write my stuff on the screen, right? However, some differences, for example, which is a little bit annoying, my muscle memory for the pointers here. Uh, in Golang, we have this, this the pointer like this, right? In Odin, not. In Odin, you have this Pascal thingy. Uh, where you have this, how does it call here? Like, I have no clue how this thing is called in your language. Uh, but this this thing, right? This basically means, hey, this chart is a pointer um, to a chart widget. Simple as that. For me, it was a little bit of a... <laughs> my muscle memory just could not reach this, this character for some reason. Uh, but now I'm used to it, right? That's that. Uh, one of the most things you are going to be uh, struggling, maybe not, but like changing your mind is for example not quite sure if i can find something decently um i need to check for example where i do these things uh, i think maybe in order book or something let me actually quickly check for you guys so i can give you a good example on things um yeah for example here so if you make in this case we make a map it's just the same thing like going there's nothing 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 really different here uh we just make a map of uh float 64 to float 64. very simple because we're going to aggregate stuff right classic thing of course you can see here defer delete aggregated why is that well the thing is that um in Golang, you can basically just do what you want, right? You can allocate a slice, you can allocate uh, a map uh, in, a, in a function, it doesn't really matter, and it's going to allocate that on the on the heap. And you do not need to deallocate it or something because uh, Golang is going to take care of that for you, right? Even if it's escaping or something, it's going to track the pointer, so it's never going to be dangling and it's going to clean up, it's going to sweep the memory whenever uh, this thing is basically has no reference anymore, right? That's the garbage collector. Of course, Odin has no garbage collector. So if we make this map here and we do not call the lead, this thing is it's fine. There's nothing going to happen. But the thing is, you're going to basically keep uh, creating memory, right? You have a memory leak. So you need to basically um, handle that. And you could do it with a defer uh, statement, for example, where you're going to delete this map. What you can also do, for example, is uh, Odin has the concept of a context and the context is basically being passed under the hood uh, in every function, right? So for example, I can do foo, for example, here is going to be context. And context, you can already see it, it's a special thing that's being, uh, some people say it's good, some people say it's bad because it's like this hidden uh, side effect that's, that's in your function being injected. Um, but hey, let's just not, uh, every language has pros and cons. And this context holds some stuff. I'm not going to go in detail here, but the thing is that this context can have, for example, an allocator or even a temporary allocator. So we could do something like temp, uh, well, uh, context, for example, uh, temp allocator, right? And then we can actually do not delete this because why? Because this allocator here is basically, uh, if we go to main here, I'm going to, hopefully you're going to understand what I'm talking about. Maybe if you're like a higher level dev, it's not going to make any sense. But if you're a little bit more low level, for example, here. So this frame is basically getting called each time, each each frame, like 60 frames a second. This frame is getting called, right? And we're going to do our stuff. We're going to draw our whole shenanigans, uh, allocate stuff with the temp allocator, slices, maps, whatever we want. And by the end of the frame, I'm going to say, hey, listen, free everything in this temporary allocator, right? Uh, why is this handy? Because otherwise, and I'm not quite sure why I didn't do it. Maybe there's some kind of a reason I need to double check uh, because most of the time I use the temp allocator for these little things. Um, is because each time we're gonna, let's say we're gonna have a bunch of aggregate functions, aggregate trades, aggregate order book. We, we, we need to do some other stuff in our, in our application uh, in this one frame render. Uh, and we're going to basically just allocate some memory, but we're also going to deallocate all the time. It's just not e efficient, right? It's way better to use something like Arenas, but in this case, a temporary allocator. Not quite sure how that is being implemented under the hood. No clue. I cannot give you uh, that context. But the thing is that we're just going to allocate this with a temporary allocator, and we're going to free the memory that's being created, uh, being allocated in that one frame. We're going to free that at the end of the frame, at once right so you can see that it's it's very powerful but but um un unlike go you need to take care of these things right uh, or you're going to have some uh memory leaks i'm going to actually uh, revert this a little bit back 
because I'm not quite sure why I didn't use the temporary allocators. In this case, maybe there is some some kind of a thing that I that I not quite sure, so I'm gonna leave it like that. But I'm gonna definitely check because it's way better to use something like that, right? Okay, that's that. Uh, on the other side, um, like the loops are a little bit different. Um, I like it. Some other thing that is very important if you're coming from Go, which I really like with Go, uh, but that's, you can do the same thing here. For example, I think it's somewhere else. I'm gonna give you some examples, right? So uh, excuse me for my, I'm not gonna cut these things out. I'm just going to give you these on the fly. Um, for example, let me see here. I think it's somewhere. I can actually search for it, do. Okay, not. Yes, do continue. For example, here, right? So we're gonna loop in this function, we're gonna calculate some stuff, and then we're gonna say, yo, if the total volume is smaller or equal than zero, do continue. Which is nice, but, I mean, you could actually do this, right? Like, continue here, and return. Uh, actually, to continue is fine, right? So something like that. Uh, because it's like, from a readable, ex from a readable perspective, this makes more sense from like a fashionista perspective uh, or saving lines of code, this makes more sense. Uh, but in, in, in Odin, you can do these things, right? In Odin, you can also do something like this. For example, foo is one, uh, question mark zero, otherwise one, something like that. Doesn't make any sense, but you can do these things. These I like. This is basically, I don't know what this is doing here. Maybe uh, it's AI generated or something and I didn't <laughs> um, implement it like uh, the long way. But these things I like to have in a language, which Go doesn't have. In, um, but these things, I would recommend to put these things on a line for readability, right? Uh, but hey, let's just keep it like that. Um, okay, cool. Besides that, um, of course, these function names are a little bit scuffed because I'm using bindings, and bindings are basically generated uh, from C, and yeah, you know, you know how, how that goes, right? Yes, uh, another thing that I want to talk about is basically what I miss a lot, but um, there are some solutions to do, is basically interfaces in Golang, right? So in Golang, you have the interfaces uh, where you can, for example, say, hey, I'm going to have a widget, and this widget implements render and update, and I can put that in a slice, and I'm going to render every widget, and I'm going to call update and uh, render on these widgets. Super easy, super convenient, especially in my case here. Uh, the problem is Odin doesn't have that, uh, but how do we fix that? Well, I'm gonna show you a little bit. Let me go to subscription here. The same thing goes here. We have this thing, it's called a stream proc type proc, takes a raw pointer, data is also a raw pointer. And this is basically where things can get very powerful, but can also be, uh, can, you're gonna have like 20,000 holes in your foot. You know what I mean? Because these are raw pointers, which basically means in C it's a void pointer and that could be anything, right? <laughs> Simple as it is. Um, the stream handler is basically a structure. It takes this raw pointer and it takes a procedure, a stream proc. So basically, how does this work? Um, the same thing as interfaces, to be honest, right? This is actually how they work under the hood, um, but without type safety. But hey, who needs type safety? You know what I mean? Um, for example, here is the same thing. This is our WebSocket thingy, so it's gonna happen. Let me scroll. I'm gonna be very fast here. If you wanna have access to the source code, you can you can buy it inside the access. No problem. Check the link in the description. Uh, for example, volumes here. We're gonna unmarshal this. Yada yada. We're gonna create a stream. We're gonna set the data pointer, and then we're gonna loop over the stream proc here, and we're gonna just call the procedure, and we put the pointer into this thing and call the data, which in this case is volumes, but could be order book data traits or whatever, right? And then if you go to chart widget, for example. Let me quickly find this. Uh, if we go to chart widget, um, it's going to be somewhere <clears throat> at the bottom. For you guys, like a little, little quick shifting here. Um, for example, here, update volumes. This is basically the stream proc I'm talking about, right? We have this pointer, which is basically a pointer to the chart widget itself, and then the data is a pointer to God knows what. In this case, it's volumes, so we need to cast that. Actually, we could do a transmute here as well. Uh, transmute. Don't ask me what the hell the difference is. Well, basically, it has, has something to do with casting to alignment and bit size and all. Bit size and all. Lots of. I'm. Hey, I'm not an expert. You know what I mean? I just. I just do what people do, and uh, once it shoots me in the foot, <laughs> I will. I will figure it out what the difference is. 
Um, the thing is transmuted just basically costs this to a pointer to a chart widget and a pointer to volumes. By the way, if you know exactly what's the difference between the transmute and the, and the normal cost, in my opinion, it's something had to do with the alignment and with the bit size or something. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Um, but hey, let me know in the comments so I can be educated as well, right? So we cost these things and then we can we do our mutex stuff here and we do our shenanigans with the data, right? That's basically what it is. And in Golang, you need to do this because you do not need to do this because you're gonna have an interface and everything is gonna be nicely typed for you, right? Type checked. The problem with Golang is interface is basically, if I, pff, correct me if I'm wrong, but interface is basically allocate on the heap uh, or something like that, which is not really performant as well. Uh, in this case, uh, you have a lot of power, but you can see that average Timmy is not going to have, have a clue what's going on and you're going to shoot yourself in the foot. Uh, another thing is very important is, for example, is that you can allocate uh, pointers uh, on the stack, basically. The problem is that if that thing escapes and you still have a reference in another function or something and you put that into a structure, you have this reference to something you allocated on this on this stack, but it's it's already, it's not there anymore. You have a, you have a, da you have a, p a dangling pointer, right? You, it's escaped, there is nothing there, it's just garbage. And that's basically where Rust comes in, uh, which Rust tries to solve. Um, in Rust, you cannot do these things. You know what I mean? You need to be very careful with that and make sure you don't have these things. Um, hey, just telling you. That's in these cases where Rust really, really, really shines. But the Rust comes with other problems, right? You know what I mean? I made this nice tweet um, about Rust. Check that out and you can laugh or you can cry, whatever you want, right? So that's that. Besides this, guys, I mean, to be honest, I'm actually pretty happy um, that I basically uh, ported this to Odin. Like heat maps, everything just renders pretty nicely, not gonna lie. Uh, very performant as well, it makes sense. The only thing we still need to do is uh, make a wasm bolt here. But uh, I already tested that, it's gonna be fine, right? Uh, we're gonna be in a good spot. Is wasm gonna be as performant as a desktop app? Definitely not. Um, we, we're gonna see, I'm gonna test it out and definitely tweet or make a video about it for sure. Yes, guys, hey, let me know what you think about it. Let me know if it's a good move to basically swap to um, to Odin or shouldn't I pick another language? Hey guys, you gonna tell me in the comments. Um, let's have some nice discussion. Look at this missing data heat, but hey, that's because uh, it's learning locally and um, yeah, whatever. Okay, so hey, uh, thanks for watching guys. Um, hey, don't forget to join the Discord. Uh, and if you're interested, if you're a trader or something and you wanna have access to this thing, let me know as well. Uh, I'm gonna launch pretty soon. And uh, besides that, I hope you guys have a good week. Peace and love. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye-bye.